things today. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. It's nice to see so many faces in the audience to supporting the program, the intern program. My name is Rosa Chelsea. I'm the Director of Strategic Management and Diversity and Interim Municipal Utilities Director. Um, first and foremost, um, thank you to the interns who have been helping us um, create innovation and creativeness um, and trying to advance our strategic plan. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time up here because we have a video and we have what you really came here to see, which is the presentations from the interns. But I just wanted to say that the city has been working very fast and furiously in the last three years trying to get a city strategic plan that's fully operationalized, but most important, um, that it involves all ideas and innovation and diversity of our community and our workforce. And one of the things that I have to thank Wydell Holmes was to create this internship program that really gets us um, having the interns, the youth, um, from our local universities involved in trying to help solve some of these major issues that not only Tempe is facing, but we, we see the same issues and um, opportunities for um, solutions from other cities nationally. So you have been part of something very innovative at the city of Tempe, and we thank you for that. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Wydell, who is ready to show a video. My name is Vanessa Villalobos and my project is the Disability Social Inclusion Metrics. My name is Taylor and I am working on the Customer Service Data Analytics for the Tempe Fire Department. My name is Jake Stout and I'm working on the 3D Digital Urban Mapping Project for Downtown Tempe. My name is Rachel Prickett and my project is the Performance Portal. My name is Paul Rosevere and I am the Telecommunications GIS Intern for the City of Tempe Strategic Management. My name is Mana Subaraman and I'm working with the IGCC as a Green Building Education and Certification Program. Hey, uh, my name is Krita Singh. The name of my project is Equity and Awareness. My name is Farah Nahar Arevalo and I am working on the project Detailed Government and Community Engagement. My name is Consuelo Arroyo and my project is the Community Health and Wellbeing Metrics Project. My name is Kate Varfalameva and my project is Showcase in Tempe, Season of Photos. Um, I'm hoping to learn how cities such as Tempe uh, take actions with sustainable development and this is an excellent opportunity for me to learn that. What I'm hoping to learn from this internship is how to work on city asset management projects such as this one I'm working on now. The best thing about my internship is that I have never had two days that are similar to each other. What I really want to get out of the internship is really learning more about disabilities and diversity, equity, and inclusion because that's something I'm very passionate about. As an urban planner, I know that my future career is going to be in public service, so however I can get involved in um, municipal departments would be really important to my future career. I'm Wydell Holmes, and I'm really pleased to have you all here today. I'm playing a couple roles, and that was the first time I ever really got to talk to Tempe 11 in the headset, so I'm really excited about that. Um, as you all know, you play multiple roles around the city, but one of our most important roles today that we're going to celebrate is the role of our strategic management intern. We started this program uh, last year, so we are in our inaugural year, and this happens to be our second wave of interns. So it's been a real pleasure to meet them and work with them and their supervisors on projects that will help move forward our council priorities and the positive outcomes that we want for our community. So let me back up a little bit. Departments actually submitted projects that align to their strategies to achieve priorities such as quality of life, safe and security, financial sustainability, and um, safe, or strong community connections. And what we did as an office is we matched those projects to interns who applied for specific projects. And I'm seeing some of our former interns now, so welcome back. 
Once those projects were matched with the interns, they attended an orientation with their supervisors and got to work very quickly. And over 12 weeks, you're gonna see a little bit of their work that they've completed. This is the week before finals, so I'm real proud of them for having a presentation ready to go. But their intern ends in a couple of weeks, but we wanted to celebrate a little bit early because they'll be putting on the final polishing touches of their projects over the next couple of weeks. I'd like to um, thank our supervisors who worked and mentored and coached each of the interns. We had Stephanie Dietrich and Robbie Aaron and Melissa McGeehy from IT, our internal services department. Andre Glass from Tempe Fire Medical and Rescue. Alex Jovanovich, who is here as well from Community Services. Michelle Stokes from my own office of Strategic Management and Diversity. Marie Raymond from Human Services. Nikki Ripley and Crick Baxter, who are hiding all the way in the back um, from Communications and Mini Relations and then Roger Vermillion from Community Development. Each year, the interns, or each session so far, it's been really impressive. Some of the plans that these particular interns have include, and this really kind of puts us to shame when you think about, were we thinking about these things when we were their age in college? Um, some of them are going into PhD programs after this May. Some will be um, studying innovation and the future, sustainability. We have an intern that will be going into the United States Navy. We have some interns that are going into the CIA, and also some who have expressed ex um, clear interest in the United Nations. So this is kind of what I'm calling our international group, it sounds like, in regards to public service. So they bring generational perspectives as well as new information that are emerging in their fields through their disciplines and their studies. So you're going to see about four to five minute snapshot of their work. We were asked, um, they were asked to actually do a TED talk, if you will, uh, so that we, we have them timed. They're not allowed to have a mouse or a clicker, so um, they were really um, following the parameters of the project. So we weren't uh, making this something that they could uh, do in class because we really wanted to teach them how to engage publicly. And usually at this podium, you get three minutes or less at a council meeting. So we gave them about four to five minutes today for their presentations. So with that, I'd like to welcome our very first uh, intern to present today, and I'm a little partial because I've had the pleasure of working with Farah on our community governance or community and digital governance project. So, welcome, Farah. Hello, everybody. Thank you for making time for being here and listening to our projects. Um, my project is detailed government and community engagement, and it's something that I really like. And I have some uh, a little bit of experience uh, before this, and I'm trying to put this experience on this project. And I would like to start with this quote from a businesswoman. So she is the founder of a cosmetic company 50 years ago, and she said that. If you, uh, everybody in this world wants to feel appreciated, so if you appreciate somebody, tell them. And this is going to connect with engagement. Um, a little bit about me, I am from Guadalajara, Mexico. I have a BA in International Affairs, and I am studying at ASU's School for the Future of Innovation in Society, a program, Global Technology and Development. So we look at the intersection between technology and society. Uh, my project uh, adds to the Tempe's uh, strategic priorities, which are these five you can see on the screen, but it concentrates on the second, which is strong community connections. And uh, these are Tempe's development goals for the future. Um, so I was asked to work on this, uh, uh, this priority, which the big aim is to make people feel invited to participate in the city. Not only give their input, but make them feel like they are really adding to the decision-making process on the city. And right now, uh, the, the city has achieved a, a result of 40, 45, 47%, uh, but they are aiming at more. And these you can see on the Tempe uh, Performance Measure Dashboard, which is the data-driven project that I'm working on with uh, the three minutes. So when I arrived, they asked me to help them uh, frame these two concepts. What is detailed governance and detailed community engagement? And they asked me, Farah, please help us frame how this should look like in the future. So it was very challenging for me. <laughs> so what I did is starting some questions. So what is what the city has now? What are the assets 
for participation, for engagement the city has now, and what other cities are doing, what other cities have in the US, in, in Arizona, and in the world, and what do we want to have in the future. And for that, I try to come up with a Kuhn model of, of how I picture the city is working now to build this community engagement. So we have the social media team, which delivers all the content. We have the strategic management office and diversity and public participation in neighborhood. And with this, I try to make uh, uh, research methods by interviewing key people in the city that I think can bring me this picture of, of community engagement and also doing case studies, which is looking at what other cities uh, in Arizona are doing. And specifically, I'm looking at city of Gilbert, also other town, uh, town university or uh, cities like Fort Collins, Boulder, and Austin, and then looking at their, at their content on their websites, on their open data portals, and what are they putting out there? How are they engaging residents? How are they making feel like they participate? Um, so that's what I've been doing mostly. I'm asking these previous questions to key people in the city and asking them, how does engagement look for you in the city? How would you picture the residents of Tempe uh, engage? And going back to my previous uh, quote, engagement is showing this appreciation. Engagement is a relationship of I appreciate what you do. So the way I look at it is the city staff is making an effort to tell residents they appreciate it and is providing this data frame of platforms, uh, opportunities for the residents to tell the city that they, ap they appreciate the work the city does for them. And I'm working on three deli the deliverables. The first is like a inventory of what the city has already to engage people digitally. And then my second is uh, a hackathon methodology and a, a policy framework to, for the city to implement. And I did my own measurement, so I, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this but with my methods, but also by being a happy person, because Tempe is a great place to work as an intern. And I, I've been done this being in meetings. I've invited to participate in this amazing project on Mill Avenue. Um, and also I get to visit uh, other city staff, not only the uh, strategic management office, and I get to work with amazing people in my internship. So all the way, all this is getting me to my final goal, which is telling the city some ideas that we could do in the future to engage people and make them feel invited to participate and be part of the decision making of the city of Tempe. So thank you. Okay, so for our next presenter, we're going to have Jake Stout come up. I'm going to let him show you some Vimeos so that I do make a little bit of an exception today in regards to our presentation format. So I actually have the wrong slide pull up. You'll have to listen up there. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Jake Stout. I'm a senior at Arizona State. My degree is in geographic information sciences. Jake, I you am... have to speak here because okay. we're recording. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Sure. Let's. My name is Jake Stout. I'm a senior at Arizona State University. My degree is in geographic information sciences. I'm a member of the United States Navy. I'll be commissioned here on May 8th. And in my free time, you can find me out hiking in the outdoors. Over here, you can see me up in the Grand Canyon. I spend spring break doing something unconventional. I hike the Renda River, which is 22 miles, 11 and a half hours, and 5,000 feet of elevation gain one way. Now, for my actual project, I was part of the 3D digital urban mapping. So this is the council's strategic priority for sustainable growth and development. So this is the performance measure, the 4.10 urban core vision. The urban core vision itself is actually part of something much bigger. It's part of the urban core master boundary, which is part of the, the great plan 2040, general plan 2040, excuse me. The general plan 2040 includes things such as affordable housing, shade and tree analysis, and also does the transit overlay for the streetcar that will be accompanying the light rail portion of Tempe. So we're going to add to the public transit portion as well. Now, building setbacks were part of this originally. However, there are some complications with that in 3D rendering. So with a new Esri tool that's going to be coming out, those will be involved in the future as well. But with the 3D base map that I've set up, future inclusion of those should be super simple. So now allow me to please switch for one second.
All right, thank you. So I did make a backup with pictures, but I wasn't going to accept pictures because pictures aren't 3D. So instead, thank you for allowing me to switch to this. This is a Tempe overlay of the light rail transit district. This is a half mile buffer of all directions of the light rail orbit, which is about a five minute walk. So we are zooming in to the Apache and 101 intersection. We'll be moving westbound. So you'll be, still be seeing some green buildings pop up here in a second. All these green buildings mark future development. These are buildings currently under construction or in some phase of the planning department. The colored base map on the bottom, for, you, for those of you who are familiar of our GIS planning department, that is our Tempe zoning overlay. So all these buildings that sit atop a specific color, that's a specific zone. And what zone they're in determines how much a developer can build on, how much the area they can accompany, and as, as well as how tall their buildings can be. So as we keep moving around, this is the downtown portion. But again, this is the light rail transit area, quarter mile buffer. This is where the main developments in Tempe are going on within this quarter mile buffer in all directions. So now just a few building highlights. If you can follow along, keep a track of the map. You are now north, northern side of Tempe Town Lake. You are looking at the future home of the Grand Apopago Park. This will be a secondary Tempe marketplace full of retail and business centers. So now we're going to come back towards the main city portion, looking at it from the northern view, looking south. You can see different kind of things. The tall gray building in the middle that's currently standing, that's W6 Apartments. So pay attention to that. We'll be back there in a second. This large building in the southern portion right now at the bottom, that's going to be Mirabella ASU. That is ASU's newest building. That's going to be 283 feet tall, and that's going to be home of lifelong learners. So that is where a lot of people are coming to live. A lot of uh, elderly people are coming. It's supposed to be sort of a retirement home as well as student housing. So we'll be looking on that in the future. Now, like I said, W6, so this is the apartment building right on the mill, and this is something you can do in fancy, fancy 3D. This is viewpoint analysis. You are looking from the top floor of W6, looking in all the intercardinal directions, checking out what the future of the city will look like once all of these green buildings are built from the very top story of W6. Now, finally, something else that's very important for us in the summer, shade. So this is the summer solstice. You're looking at the West End Tempe. This is right south of us right now, right by the Jack in the Box on the mill. So this is pre-dawn on June 21st, 2019. You'll watch the sun rise here in just a second. Following the sunset. So using this, city planners and the developers can see how a building's going to affect our shade. And using that, you can also accompany the tree portion as well and see how the shade will be in the future. So the future of this project, 3D mapping is a long, long range planning tool. It's gonna to help our, our GIS and planning department make sense of the urban core master boundary as well as the general plan 2040. In addition, we can also put this to an open data map. So like other cities like San Diego and Seattle, we can post this online and give a link to the citizens of Tempe and they can check out our city themselves on their own computers in 3D and see these proposed developments for themselves at home. Thank you. that. Um, I appreciate that. That also relates to the city's goal of having a, a sustainable tree canopy across our community. So I think we're going to be us utilizing that in the future as well. So with that, I'd like to uh, welcome Taylor Sapero. She worked in our uh, fire medical rescue department, and she worked on analyzing customer service surveys to guide their uh, outreach and education programs. There you go. Oops. Did it go back? All right. All right. There we go. All right. Like um, she just said, 
My name is Taylor Sapero. I'm with the Tempe Fire and Medical Rescue Department, and my project is analyzing customer service um, to guide customer service surveys to guide community outreach and educational programs in Tempe. Um, so about me, I'm a junior at Arizona State University. I'm double majoring in urban planning in Spanish. I'm a next generation service caller. I, and for fun, I'm an ASU salsa devil as well as a sister in Alpha Gamma Delta. I put my favorite quote up there. Um, not only do I love traveling, but it's also just a remembrance for me to enjoy the experiences in life and not material things. Um, so the project overview. When our fire departments go out on their calls, they take personal information, including emails, and they use that to reach out to the um, patients following their calls through surveys like the one on the screen. Um, our current survey has 10 questions. Six of them are on a rating scale, and then four of them are free response. And this survey is used to determine the quality, care, and professionalism of the crews while they're out on call. Um, the current trends of the survey is I believe that there's too many questions. We're getting really repetitive answers, and um, there's just an overall lack of understanding of what we do as a department. Um, people aren't really taking them serious. As you can see, that this entire survey said not applicable um, for least satisfied. That's a good thing for us, I would guess, because there's nothing that they're not satisfied with, but it doesn't give us any constructive information. And people use it for other things, like you're going to see on these slides. Um, this person was upset that they didn't get an autographed calendar of the firemen. Um, this person said that we can improve by bringing them cookies next time. Um, this person said that, that we should, I forget what it says, improve Cancel. our service by, oh no, they were happy about how they looked, and this one as well. They were happy about how the firemen looked. So it's a common trend that people are happy about how our firemen look, but it's not constructive. Um, so what I've been doing is, I was thinking about how I worked in fast food when I was growing up, and that my company was really good about posting how we did compliments and complaints on the wall. So I thought we should be doing something similar for our, for our firemen. So I've been putting them in categories um, that's time related, friendliness, medical equipment, um, the medical attention, and then extreme complaints. And I've been putting it in these categories like you see here so that they can better see what's going on and maybe determine more what, like, where they need to improve on. Um, let's see if the slide switch. Okay. So I think continuing by the end of my term, I'd like to develop a new survey that is shorter in length and that has um, more of a Likert scale. Instead of putting the rating on individual slides, I think they should all just be in one scale. And then limiting it to free response. So this is an example from Santa Clara Fire. They have a Likert scale, and then they have space for any additional comments, suggestions, complaints, concerns, anything that the patient might have. Um, this is another example from North Carolina. They have the Likert scale of about seven questions, and then they leave room for people to compliment any employee that they'd like, and then they have room for any additional comments, questions, concerns. And I think it just shortens it overall and gives it more of a, a clean, short, easy way instead of having to scroll and scroll and scroll through the different things. Um, future steps for this is that we can guide our community um, outreach on what we do. The common complaint that I see is, why did a fire truck come when I only needed an ambulance? And the answer is, is that we never know how many men and women we're going to need on each call. So if we advertise and tell people why we do the things that we do in this department, that might bring down the anger that they're having. Um, I think it's also important that we are sending out the compliments and complaints through emails or um, weekly wall posting in the firehouse so that the crews can know what's going on and where they can improve on, and not just individually, but as a team as well. Um, and then importantly, going on in the future is we need to find a way to um, engage citizens who have not yet used our service and just understand the public perception on the department. Um, we can do this by posting public perception surveys on our Instagram, Nextdoor, Facebook, but we can also contract out to customer sur survey um, companies that can do this for us and analyze what's going on in the city of Tempe. And the next important thing is to understand the citizen understanding of fire prevention and how they can make their homes safer. And this can help us to guide where we do smoke detector walks and where we do um, pool safety initiatives. So that can help us to guide are both our social media as well as our initiatives in different parts of the town. Thank you. Okay, and our next presenter is Consuelo Arroyo.
Sorry, my light goes out there. everyone, I would just like to start off my presentation by giving a brief introduction of myself and also how I ended up at this internship with the city of Tempe. So my name is Consuelo Arroyo and I was born and raised here in Tempe, Arizona and I now attend Arizona State University where I am majoring in global health with a minor in urban planning and a certificate in cross-sector leadership meaning that I spend a lot of my time in the classroom and at home studying. But when I am not doing this, I like to do things to challenge myself and allow me to step outside of my comfort zone. So this spring break, I went on a week and a half trip to Beijing, China, where I had to work through challenges such as always getting lost on public transportation and running out of money and not finding an ATM and also never knowing what food I was ordering. So I have no idea what that is, but it was delicious. And because I like to challenge myself, I also decided to apply and accept this internship offer with the city of Tempe, where my job was to create Performance Measure 3.13, Health and Well-Being. So when I first began my internship, I had to ask myself the following question. How do you measure health and well-being in a community? And depending on one's background and expertise, they might have completely different views about what health and well-being is. So this led me to my first challenge when trying to develop this metric, which is that health and wellness is a very broad topic. So the first couple days of my internship really involved me sifting through these many, many results to try to see which information would be most relevant to the city as a key performance measure. And in order to keep myself organized, what I did was create a series of Excel sheets where I documented and kept track of any information that I found was most important to the city. And as you can see, there was a lot of information available. And this is just one screenshot of like the five different pages that I had. But in addition to looking through these um, state reports from the Arizona Health Department and the CDC, I also had some more hands-on activities, such as taking tours of city facilities um, to see what existing programs are already in place and identifying any gaps. And I also met with city staff and health and urban planning professors from ASU to once again trying to gain a different view and perspective on health and well-being in a community. And what I found was that there was no one way to define and measure health and well-being. So health and well-being involves a number of things. So if I were to say today that as long as the city of Tempe has an obesity rate lower than the national average, then we have a healthy city, then this would be false. Health and well-being require a more holistic view, which is why I instead developed an index with four different domains, or three different domains now. And the three different domains are health, living conditions, and education, and economic opportunities. And under each domain are a series of indicators that we can use to measure health. For instance, I have one of the domains up there, which is living conditions. And this one happens to have seven indicators. So together, this creates a more holistic approach on how to define health and well-being. So it's not just one thing. And so I have about two weeks left at my internship, during which I will focus my time on finding city level and national data in order to have some comparable rates and see where the city of Tempe currently stands on its health and well-being. But after this, what is left for me? Well, I will be traveling hundreds of miles away to Washington, D.C. in order to complete a fully funded internship at the Capitol, where I will be working on health policy 
And this will be the first time I will be living anywhere besides the city of Tempe for an extended period of time. So I am very grateful to have worked here and gained some insight on health from a local level so I can be able to apply that on a national level in Washington, D.C. this summer. So thank you. Okay, and so our next intern is Vanessa. I sure will. Let's see if I can get it. So, hello, good afternoon. My name is Vanessa Villalobos, and I am a junior at Arizona State University. I am currently studying sustainability in Spanish with a certificate in civil communication. Um, and here's just a snapshot into my life, um, my friends and my family and my passions. So I'll give you a moment to look at that. Um, and so my job this um, semester was to develop a self-assessment tool for the city of Tempe focused on disability inclusion. Um, and so this was basically a metric. But the problem with this is we are, we think we are the first city to develop any kind of metrics surrounding this topic. Um, so when we we're coming for research or looking for research, it's very impossible to find or um, very difficult to find for that matter. Um, so when you're looking at this, you think, oh, well, we're just developing some metrics. Let's, you know, put together some graphics. Let's uh, put some statistics together and call it a day. Um, but it's much more complex than that, especially when dealing with um, a community like the disability community, which um, up to this point has just been focusing on, all right, let's make sure they get in the door and that's it. Um, but that's not enough. So um, one quote that I really like is, I'm always doing what I cannot do yet in order to learn how to do it by Vincent Van Gogh. And so... Um, that's what this project was about, learning to do something that we don't know how to do yet um, in order to do it for people that actually will benefit from it. So what were we really doing? So we were developing a disability social inclusion self-assessment tool um, focused on 10 categories, transportation, employment, programs, events, management, policies, equality, services, activities, communication. Um, so I was lucky enough to follow footsteps of a previous intern who's actually in the audience today, um, who developed four of the metrics for me and um, I was developing the remaining six. So equality, which is our first metric that we're gonna go into a little bit, um, focuses really on what do we think about when we think about disability inclusion. Um, that's making sure that people are being inclusive and having everyone make sure that they feel comfortable in the city. Um, so specifically, we're measuring um, how they feel in the city itself and if we're being representative of those people. Um, so if we're going to be doing this, we need to involve more of a community-based um, research. So specifically using the survey that we develop as a city and helping the community um, and making sure that everybody feels like they are included in that aspect. Um, so for our second one, management, we really wanted this category to focus on the linguistic and cultural competency of the city, um, especially city employees, by providing adequate tra training and by providing the trainings to serve those employees. So our goals really were to increase training for, social, for disability inclusion by 20% citywide. And in order to do that, we really want to increase the amount of trainings that we're actually offering for the city. Um, so specifically, we will be measuring this based on the trainings that we are providing and then the people that are actually attending those trainings. Um, so for our next category, which is going to be services, Services, okay, um, are one of the main things that we provide as a city, especially when you're looking at, oh, what does the city do for me? Services, that's what we think of. Um, and so when we're doing this, we really wanna make sure that we have the staffing, training, and um, adequate accommodations for people with disabilities to actually be utilizing our services and not just be looking at them from an outside perspective. Um, and so what we're really focusing on improving our participation and accommodation um, by measuring the people that are actually participating in the services through accommodation requests, but also having the resources to provide those accommodations for them. So along with services, we have activities, which is our next category. Yes, okay, um, with a goal to increase participation and inclusion in governing matters, specifically um, for city council meetings, um, commissions, and things like that. So we really want to increase the amount of city council agendas um, and commission agenda items that are focusing on disability inclusion, but also that people with disabilities are participating in, cit in citywide governing um, activities, for example, voting and making sure they have access to the materials that they need. Um, and so we will be doing that by um, measuring a couple of things. Um, and so one of them is to make sure that we have 
everyone has access to the things that they need in order to participate in government services. Um, and then along with that, communication and how we communicate with our with people with disabilities is key, especially when we're trying to provide any services to anybody. Um, so for, for this category specifically, sorry, we are looking at the bare bones of the literature and how we are actually, what are we actually putting on the materials that we're providing to people um, and making sure that we have things that are in basic English if that's something that people need. Um, so in order to really make a change, we need to start at the policies. And so we want to make sure that we're updating our current policies to include people with disabilities, but also make sure that we are creating policies to properly accommodate people with disabilities. Um, and so we really want to ensure that we're including these people, people with disabilities, in order to um, have them be a part of the city in the ways that they should and will be able to be in the future. Um, so all together with the work from the previous intern, um, we will be able to create this, um, dis this disability self-assessment tool for the city of Tempe um, and with work from next departments and making sure that we are actually asking the people with disabilities themselves whether this is a tool that is appropriate for them since they believe strongly in the model of don't um, nothing about us without us. Um, so making sure that we are including them in the analysis of these tools in order to make it citywide. So yeah, that's it. The camera here? Yes. Can you introduce it? Huh? Do you want to introduce them real quick? Oh, sure. I, I'm going to introduce my family, apparently. So my sister's here, and my niece is here. I think she's looking at her phone, but it's OK. It's because she wasn't talking during my presentation. And my brother-in-law is also here. And my best friend's here, too. She's in the back. Hello, Katie. Um, <laughs> and that's it. So if you guys have any questions, or if you want to see the previous intern's metrics, you could let me know, and I will be happy to show them to you. OK, thank you. So our next intern is Kate Barfalamaleva, and she is from Belarus. So it was a pleasure to get to know her and all of her images that she's creating for the Tim for Timpi. Oh, can you start from the beginning? Sure. Go back up. Okay. Yeah. So hello everybody. My name is Kate, and today I'm going to present you the results of my project and being a participant of strategic management intern program with the city of Tempe. And a little bit about myself. Uh, yeah, as, I was, as Vidal mentioned already, I'm from Belarus. And I did my bachelor degree in architecture in Belarus as well. And here I came to do my master degree in ASU in urban planning. And my big passion is photography. And here you can see some examples of my best shots. And if I tell you that the last two months I was the eyes of the city of Tempe, Will you guess what my project was about? Any guess? <laughs> <laughs> mm, so, the name of my project was uh, Showcase in Tempe, a season of photos. And the goal of this project was to show and highlight the identity of the Tempe as an as approach. I was taking the pictures of different events around the Tempe. And as a result, now we can use these pictures to promote the events in the social media. And um, every day, every week started uh, from my meeting with a uh, supervisor and we discussed together with her what kind of events can help us to highlight the Tempe. And then I went to the events and I took tons of the photos and after this I chose the best one to Photoshop and after we can use them. And now I want to, to show you my pictures but throughout the challenges that I overcome throughout my internship. So it's not easy to highlight the identity of the Tempe because I always need to think about how to take a picture and to have specific signs that will make you feel and know that you are exactly in Tempe. So for example, here is Mill Avenue sign during the Festival of Arts. Also, sometimes it's not easy to make it the same great on the photo as in real life. And this spot is really very cool at night because of the lights. But to take this photo, I was needed a specific equipment and specific time. And also, it's, it's not easy to surprise you when there is something usual and usual on the picture when you see in daily life, like a tree in a, in a park. And also, I was always trying to find a wow moment of the event because I wanted to make people amazed about the event and to make them to wait for this event in the future. And 
To capture the energy is not easy because I cannot just ask people to pretend that they enjoy the event. <laughs> so I, I always need to feel what's going on. And also, sometimes I always just need to be fast because there is a race and I need to be and I need to take a, fi a picture of how they're crossing the finish line. So there is only just moment to do this, just one time. And also show the diversity of the community, sometimes challenging because there are not many people on such events and I need to look for them and I need to wait for them and then to take a picture of them. And not all pictures are good for social media. I love this picture, but these guys are pretending cowboys, but because of the guns, we cannot use it for all type of social media, but still I hope we can. And just to show fun, it's not easy because it's happened accidentally and I just need to be in the right time and the right spot and to capture this moment of people having fun. And some sh there was a couple of shots when I have to shoot from the boat and <laughs> it's really scary because I was I, I was need to balance on the small boat and not to fall down in the river and then focus on the event and to took pictures. And some results, but for now, for this day, uh, there was taken 2,500 photos, 117 were photoshopped in 64 days for 15 events. And for now, there are two publications online where we done, and I hope there will be more. And I would like to, to share with you some takeaways from this internship, and they're related to photography, but also to life in general. So sometimes scale of small community has a bigger impact and it's better to focus on something small uh, than for some, something big for undefined big crowd. And success is choosing the right point of view and especially in photography, the, your expectations of the event and how do you think about it, it depends and influence on the photo. And there will be no other time to, to have the best should ever and sometimes you just have only one moment to do the things right and i would like to thank you Vidal and chris and the city of tempe for this wonderful opportunity and for this experience thank you. you sure can and so learn from my lessons as i will not have another time to take a picture of this crowd standing here i would like to take a picture now of you guys, and especially in turns, you can show your hands and we will know that here you are. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks, Kate. Kate mentioned that she's already been in two publications and one was to highlight city, um, city of Tempe as one of the most livable cities in the United States. And it was the photo of the two people sitting near the lake with the big broad background of the south part of the lake in front of them. So congratulations, Kate. And so without further ado, um, we also were, had the privilege of having two interns in our office and they did a really good job of sharing desk. And I wanted to note that the picture that Farah showed with the really old computers we didn't have them really using old computers. We had them with on the virtual machines and on some hard, hard drives. So Rachel, if you'd come up, I'm excited to see your presentation. <laughs> and, and Mark is putting out a big sigh of relief, our IT director. <laughs> I was going to say, they're my computers. Yeah, they were his computers, that's right. They worked just fine. <laughs> Um, hello everyone, my name is Rachel Prickett and I'm an intern here at the Strategic Management University. Um, a little bit about me, I am a senior at ASU where I am a major in sustainability with an emphasis in society. I'm a part of ASU's sketch comedy group, Farside, where I write and perform sketches every week. And I really enjoy traveling in my free time. You can see a picture of me in Greece last summer. Um, the quote I chose was from Rachel Carson, who is an environmentalist, and she says, the more clearly we can focus our attention on the wonders and realities of the universe about us, the less taste we shall have for destruction, which I think goes in line with my personal um, major and my project. So the most important question I had to think about was why language was important, because my um, project was surrounding the performance portal, which is what people see when they log onto our website to go to all of our different measures and all of the performance, um, the performance measures. 
Um, so I had to look at all of them and offer reviews. My um, project was in the uh, feeling welcome to participate in city decision making performance measure. Um, so it was very important for me to analyze and review everything that our citizens and community members were looking at so that they feel welcome and not overwhelmed by what they are being presented. Um, my key activities was quality assurance and quality control. I did a lot of spreadsheet work, a lot of data checking. Um, I also did a lot of formatting, making all of the worksheets that we use to um, optimize the data pro uh, the performance portal and um, also uh, making them all in line and the same across the board. I also made several recommendations for projects, worksheets, and other things that I thought could improve the, um, the way that they were read. My strategies were most importantly double and triple, triple checking everything um, within my the quality assurance, you have to make sure that the data that's in there is most updated, data gets put in every day, so I had to double check a lot. Um, problem solving was a big thing of um, not only within technological aspects, but also within um, trying to basically find the best way to word something or um, display something to somebody. And also gaining different perspectives. As somebody who is, who is privileged enough to go to a university, I know that I have a certain level of reading or a college reading level, and I have to understand that not all people do in when making these recommendations. Um, some of the biggest challenges I faced were communication and formatting. Um, there's a lot of, there can be issues with getting the right information from the right people, and also I just, sometimes Microsoft Word has a mind of its own, and I can't exactly get it to do the thing that I want it to, which uh, set me back a little bit. But overall, um, I was able to reformat and organize 128 performance measure worksheets, and um, that included all, every performance measure, I believe there's 128 or... 99 active. 99 mm -hmm. active, so... And we went back to I, some archives. Yes, yes, some archived ones as well. Um, and then I performed quality assurance for the portal, worksheets, the PMI data, et cetera, and also made language recommendations for worksheets and surveys. Um, so there was a lot of different aspects in mind. It was a lot of um, more, uh, not so much grunt work, but more behind the scenes kind of work, which I enjoy personally. Um, so the uh, recommendations I would make for the person who's be, who'll be working on this next, the next intern is to staying up to date with all the data. There'd be a lot of times where I'd work on one portion of a spreadsheet and then I could have been working on two parts or three parts at a time going through and checking everything. The data changes a lot. Um, it's also really important to have an open and inclusive mind. I was able to go to Michelle Stokes, one of her LDA lessons on um, diversity and um, disability, which helped me realize a lot of things about um, inclusion that's very important when formatting language. Um, I gained a lot of, from this experience. I had never worked in a professional environment like this before. I've mostly worked in restaurants for since I was 16, and so being able to be in a professional environment was really um, ex important for me, and I'm excited for that, um, for my experience in the future. Um, I was able to learn about the government. I, again, and very, it was very new coming into a lot of this, and I was lucky enough to get the spot, but I did feel unqualified not knowing precisely a lot of government lingo, and so I was happy I got to learn a lot of that as well. Um, some takeaways I got was that government work is extensive. Um, that's something that I'm sure all of you know, but was new to me. Um, the city of Tempe does put a lot of effort into optimizing the lives of its community members. Um, I had never really known the, all the measures and all the things that went into making Tempe such a great place to live. And also I learned that I really enjoy spreadsheets and quality assurance, and I guess my nerd brain enjoys um, lists and checklists. And that is that. Thank you very much, and thank you all for coming. Hey, thanks, Rachel. And we have following Rachel Manas, and she worked in our community development department. Finding the right one. There we go. Well, done. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Manas Subaraman, and I worked on the um, IGCC project for the strategic management internship. 
So um, in order to start off, I want to introduce a quote that is very close to my heart, and it is, it's fine to celebrate success, but it is more important to heed the lessons of failure. As someone who expects only the best and sometimes even perfection for myself, it's really hard for me to con confront failure. And I felt that this quote has been a very big um, guide in throughout all of my struggles, and like it's taught me a lot throughout life. So I just want to introduce that to you. Um, and I am currently a junior pursuing urban planning as a major and a sustainability minor. And I'm also an honors student. Um, in my free time, I paddle for the ASU Dragon Boat team. Um, I learn Korean. I build things out of clay and I also sing. So before I introduce my project, I want to ask the audience, what percent of total energy use in the US is, uh, you know, account, are do buildings account for? Like, you know, just take a couple seconds. 30. Very close. Any quick comment, please? So the answer is 39% as of 2017. Yeah, very close. Good job. <laughs> and um, go on, next slide. on top of that, they also account for 12% of total water use, 38% uh, of total um, electricity use. Wait, sorry. Carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide emissions, and 68% uh, of total electric, electricity cons consumption. So um, buildings uh, use up a lot of resources. And as the US and Tempe continues to develop, this, um, is, is only, th these numbers are only going to increase. And the carbon footprint of buildings are going to increase as well. So as a result, Tempe has uh, created the sustainable development and uh, growth performance my, uh, council priority, and my project falls under this pro performance measure, um, specifically community energy development, and I'm looking into creating a uh, green building program for this city. So the main goal of my project was to create a voluntary compliance green building program for the city of Tempe and to see what exactly goes into the creation of a successful program. And um, for this, I first had reviewed the green building codes, the IGCC 2015 and 2018 versions, as well as the LEED codes, since they are, these are very important green building codes. Um, and I also looked into other cities, what other cities are doing, and also looking at what worked for them, what did not work for them, as well as um, looking at strategies for Tempe itself, such as incentives that would you know, encourage developers, strategies, and education. So some challenges I encountered throughout the uh, this process was that um, there is currently not much of a fund, much funding or resources to create a green building program, and this ties into the fact that green building is not really one of the higher priorities. There are other priorities such as affordable housing and work uh, workforce housing, which is obviously very very important. And on top of that, a green building program in Tempe could and it really depends on how we uh, structure it, could push developers to other cities. So this is a challenge we are facing. So um, what I recommend um, with all my research is that uh, Tempe should maybe look into create, like negotiating a regional green building program with neighboring cities so that there is a uniform code for the entire region and doesn't push the developers away from one city or the other. Um, and Part of this strategy is to educate the public on why green building is needed, as well as what um, incentives are provided, as well as training, creating a training, training program for staff and other people who are interested in uh, learning about green building, as well as finally establishing either a regional program or a citywide program, depending on um, how things go. So my develop deliverables for this uh, internship include this capstone presentation, a separate department presentation with a little more detail, as well as a white paper on establishing a green building in Tempe. And um, so from this internship, I gained a lot of skills, namely in uh, data collection, analysis, communication, and very importantly, interviewing, because I did have to interview, interview a lot of um, green building officials in other cities. Um, and secondly, I gained a lot of real world, real world experience. I did not have much experience on how sustainable policies and sustainable development programs are, you know, created by government and how um, the struggles they have to go through to be, you know, to become a thing. And so this was really valuable experience in that. 
as well as um, experiencing different, one of the goals of my college career is to experience different fields of urban planning. And this uh, gave me the much needed experience in community development and um, built environment. So some takeaways from the internship is, are that um, I think it would be a really good idea to maybe negotiate a more regional green building program. And like I said, to um, have more uniform um, code for the region um, to create an educate to educate the public and have public outreach program first with, in order to educate everyone um, on the necessity of a green building program and as well as to um, create a training program for everyone. Thank you. Thank you And so for our final presentation today, we have Paul Resvor, who worked on our telecommunication, telecommunication system. And spent a lot of time out in the field, is my understanding. I did. <laughs> okay. All right, good afternoon everyone. My name is Paul Rosevere, and today I'll be telling you, sharing some in-depth information about our city's telecommunications assets and how this project has impacted the future of our city's networks. I'm currently a graduate student enrolled in the MAS GIS program at ASU. It stands for Master's Advanced Studies in Geographic Information Systems. I'm also the telecommunications intern at the Tempe Strategic Management and Diversity Department. My favorite spatial quote is, Speak softly and carry a big stick, you will go far. <laughs> Theodore Roosevelt, simple, easy. All right, telecommunications is one of the most important aspects of modern life. The power that keeps us all interconnected and allows us to succeed as a technology, technologically advanced society. It's utilized by everyone, although many of us do not think of what it takes to keep this intricate network connected and functioning. This project involves City Council Priority One, uh, number one, which is the safe and secure communities. And having accurate documentation of physical network assets is incredibly important for our city, and that task has fallen into my hands. In order, to, in order for a new construction project to begin, underground facilities from water, electric, telecommunications, gas, etc., must be marked properly to protect them from excavation and digging that may take place. If they are not properly marked, these assets could be damaged or destroyed, uh, causing major issues for our networks. This is a chart of the uh, marking color codes for every different type of uh, service out there. The or our communications networks will be orange, as you can see in this photo here. And then white stands for uh, proposed excavations. So it's important for these to be properly marked and for the right mapping for our, our technicians to be able to use in order to get these uh, details right for the construction companies. So every provider, uh, which has underground facilities traversing our city is responsible for marking equipment so that no complications take place during excavations in the area of interest. And that uh, now we've got this example of two vaults that uh, are an example of what we have across the city. Um, see. They come in all sh different shapes and sizes, but they serve to the same purpose to allow us to have access to our fiber. And then here we have an example of our trenches filled with conduits and interducts uh, that hold all our precious fiber that we rely on. When it comes to excavations, it's vital for construction project managers to know exactly where they are located. That way, nothing gets pierced, destroyed, anything like that. So the goals for this project are to edit the network assets map, use daily bar technicians to correct and confirm the physical locations of all City of Tempe vaults and trenches in the city, and to revise the layers and attributes tables for input of our data collection assets, and to train our technicians and engineers on the portable collection device used in conjunction with Collector ArcGIS, which is this application right here. This allows us to uh, make really quick, easy edits out in the field that can be uploaded right away. So this is the map I was given when I started the project. The yellow polylons represent the trenches carrying our fiber, and the orange points represent the vaults where we access the fiber. The issue with the map is that the assets were not confirmed physically on site when they were drawn in, so there are many inaccuracies. As you can see right here, Several of these inaccuracies were minor, just five to 10 feet maybe, but a lot of them were 15 to 30 feet or more. Other assets simply did not exist where they should. And 
there are other assets that shouldn't have been there in certain places. So my primary source of confirming these assets was to visit many of these uh, sites as possible physically with our city technicians who monitor them on a weekly basis and know them the best. So here is the current map as of today. It's about 65, 70% complete. You can see all the green polylines that represent the trenches that we have confirmed, and the purple points are all the vaults that are confirmed as well. This map is gonna save our city employees a lot of time uh, when they're out there on the fields trying to make these blue stake markings. As part of my deliverables, I've created a few different things, including an SOP and this full tutorial here for the collector application so that all our te uh, technicians and engineers can be trained to be able to properly use the application and get through it easily. So what I've taken away from this project is a new res respect for an understanding from city infrastructure. Without exposure to this work, I would have never I've been clueless to the processes and importance of tracking and maintaining city assets such as these. The knowledge I have gained from these, and this will likely serve me in my career and completion of my degree at the end of the summertime. I also want to thank our technicians and engineers that have worked with me to help me understand the project and allow me to do what I had to do to get them to the point where we are today. Thank, thank you. you. So as you can see, the projects were just as diverse as the disciplines that each of these interns represent, and just as diverse as all of the different performance measures that we've operationalized to meet our council priorities. So with that, I'd like to give you first a big round of applause. Thank you all of our interns. Um, some of them have never even presented in council chambers, so we're really excited about that. And then I'd also have the pleasure of um, asking our city manager and our assistant city manager, Andrew Ching and Stephen Methvin, if they'll come help us give out some of our certificates of completion of our intern program. <laughs> Thank you. So with that, we'd like to welcome Taylor Sapero. Thank you for your work, Taylor. Uh, Kate, are you going to take some pictures for us? We can do some pictures. <laughs> the project never ends, huh, Kate? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And then we have Vanessa Villalobos. And Rachel Prickett. Thank you. And then we also have Paul Roosevelt, who, by the way, is a brewmaster. So we had a good time this semester, didn't we, Paul? <laughs> Manas Subaram. I know I can I can say your first name. <laughs> and finally, Jake Stout. And we'll wish Jake well as he goes off into the Navy. Did you guess it was him? We talked about the Navy. <laughs> And Farah. And Consuelo, who worked with Community Services. And finally, Miss Kate Barfamala. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a selfie. Yeah. We'll do that. <laughs> so thank you all. Oh. So I'm gonna like I'd like to turn this over to Andrew and Stephen if they'd like to say a few words. Um, I'll go back during my IT work. So thank you, Andrew, for coming. Thank you, Stephen. Sure, no problem. Sorry I was a little bit late. Um, but, and I'm sure a lot of this has either been said or expressed in some way, but, you know, we are, are grateful for the time that you spent with us this past few weeks. Uh, uh, how was it? 
Three months, Bob? About three months. Mm -hmm. About three months. Um, and I know, I think, that the departments that you worked in very much appreciate the work that you did. And that, you know, three months, you know, in the grand scheme of things may not seem like a long time, but sometimes it can make all the difference. I mean, your ideas and things that you worked on here, if you come back in a year, two years, five years, you know, who knows? Many of these things may, in fact, be integral to the type of work that those departments are doing. It's, uh, there, there really is no uh, effort when it's put to good use and it's for a great community like the city of Tempe that should not be recognized for what it is, which is it's an opportunity for you to learn. It's an opportunity for us to learn from you. Um, you know, those people uh, in our line of work and in really any line of work who are most successful are the people who understand that you know, education isn't really a destination, right? That your life really revolves around on a continual basis the more knowledge that you learn and your openness to new ideas and the acceptance of the of the of the, the notion that we can always do better right when we measure as strategic management measures and we think about in terms of how are we doing for ourselves how are we doing compared to how we did years ago or in recent past how are other communities that are similar to tempe doing uh, with respect to the work that they do that's similar to the work that we do when you try to get down to that level and you really start thinking about things, it can be very inspiring. It can also be very daunting, as I'm sure you learned during your, your three months. But it can also be really inspiring because when the work is done well here at this city and it serves this community, there's a real sense of accomplishment and satisfaction that I don't think you find in a lot of places, quite frankly. I think when you do work that is, is intended for the betterment of the lives of the people that live in the community that we serve, you can see the results. You know, driving around and being a part of this community and seeing what we've done over the course of the years that I've either been part of the city of Tempe or living in the city of Tempe has been amazing. And that doesn't happen because of any one person lifting all of it. It's everybody working together. It doesn't matter whether you're here for, as an intern for three months or you've worked here for 30 years. Everybody has a role to play and everybody plays a part in the success of the entire organization. So think about that as, as you, you, you come to a conclusion for your time here at the city of Tempe. I hope you look back and you think about the fact that no matter what you did and no matter what significance you may attribute to it, it mattered. And the work that you did it mattered for you and it matters for us very much. So thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. So with that, we'll end our recording. And uh, thank you for coming. We have some water and some treats in the back um, from our our wonderful Megan in our office who always puts these things together, so we appreciate that. And thank you for coming. <laughs>